How Fluorite Forms The formation of fluorite, a mineral renowned for its very stunning colour and unique fluorescence, is a testament to the intricate interplay of geological processes that take place beneath our feet. In this video, I'm going to try and break down the formation of fluorite in five manageable, easy, beginner-friendly steps. Ready? Fluorine and calcium, hydrothermal fluids, precipitation of fluorite, crystal growth and aggregation, and crystal exposure. The formation of fluorite originates deep within the Earth's crust, where various geological processes contribute to the release of essential elements. Volcanic activity, for instance, plays a very significant role in liberating fluorine and calcium from magmatic sources. Additionally, alteration of existing rocks through processes like hydrothermal metamorphism can release these elements into the surrounding environment. As these elements become available, they serve as the building blocks for the formation of fluorite. Hydrothermal fluids heated by the Earth's internal heat and often enriched with dissolved minerals, including fluorine and calcium, migrate through fractures and faults in the Earth's crust. These fluids, typically water-based, act as carriers transporting the dissolved elements over very long distances. As they ascend towards the surface, they create conduits within the rock, carving out pathways for mineral deposition. The underlying temperature, pressure and composition of these fluids plays an extremely crucial role in determining the conditions conducive to fluorite formation. Upon encountering suitable conditions, such as a decrease in temperature or pressure, or even a change in chemical composition, the hydrothermal fluids will undergo a process known as precipitation. During precipitation, the dissolved fluorine and calcium ions within the fluid begin to come together and crystallise. This process occurs as the fluid loses its capacity to hold the dissolved minerals, leading to their deposition onto available surfaces within the fractures and cavities of the host rock. Once the initial nuclei of fluorite crystals form, they'll act as seeds for further crystal growth. As mineral-laden fluids continue to flow through the vein, they'll deposit additional layers of fluorite onto these nuclei, gradually expanding the size and complexity of the crystals. This process of crystal growth is influenced by various factors such as the availability of dissolved minerals, the duration of fluid flow, and the physical constraints imposed by the surrounding rocks. Moreover, individual fluorite crystals may aggregate together, forming clusters or intergrown structures within the host rock. This will further enhance their diversity and beauty from specimen to specimen. The final stage of fluorite formation involves geological processes that impact its preservation and then eventual exposure. Over geological timescales, tectonic movements such as mountain building events or crustal uplift may bring fluorite bearing rocks closer to the Earth's surface. Subsequent erosion, driven by natural forces like water or wind or ice, gradually expose these rocks, unveiling the fluorite veins contained within. The preservation of fluorite crystals is also influenced by the chemical stability of the mineral and the surrounding rock, as well as the environmental conditions present in their geological setting. Ultimately, the discovery and study of these exposed fluorite deposits offer valuable insights into Earth's geological history and the processes that literally shape its dynamic crust. 